Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Our first guest is a professor of political economy and management expert, a former presidential candidate who has served in very senior positions in Nigeria. He recently participated in the gubernatorial primaries in Delta State under the platform of the All Progressives Congress. Professor Patrick told me, welcome to the morning show. Thank you. Good to see you again uh, on Thank this program. Thank you for joining right. us again. Well, I can come. Well, <laughs> I've been following your, <laughs> if I may say, ordeal yeah. <laughs> in Delta State uh, with the APC, with the gubernatorial primaries. And you've written a piece in which you have dismissed the process as shambolic, shambolic. as a mockery of democracy. Yes. And you feel so disappointed that a party you have to build cannot even organize primaries. Primary. What exactly happened? Um, it's a criminal conspiracy. I think actually that what happened in Asaba is treasonable felony. Hmm. We should be thinking of how to prosecute people who do such things to democracy. Um, very simple process. Even the PDP that we've said all kinds of things about, when you collect your form, there's a delegates list attached to it. Uh, let's start with the nature of the process. They came up with direct and indirect primaries. Make your choice. There's no uniformity. Okay, some states will get this, some states will get that. There were about seven or so aspirants in the beginning, all but one. Even that one said, it's okay, I could go with direct, but I, well, I, I would prefer indirect. Mm -hmm. And with six and a half, let's now call it, out of seven wanting direct, they chose indirect. Mm -hmm. So, fine. So let's proceed with indirect. A week to the um, indirect primaries. I write a letter to the chairman of the party saying, can I please have a list of the delegates? Proper thing to do. I get no reply. Uh, 48 hours, I visit the state chairman of the party and I say, look, we have 48 hours to this primary. The rules say that I should get a list of the delegates. So at least I can make a pitch to the delegates and he says, oh, you know, these things come from Abuja. We don't know anything. 20 hours to the primaries, I write him a formal letter and I say, can you please show me the guidelines because I'm flying blind. I don't know what we're supposed to be doing in this thing. Can I see the guidelines? Can I see the delegates list? Can I know where it is? Can I know what time it starts? He throws his hands up in the air. In fact, 24 hours before, there's speculation that the event will now be hundreds of miles away in Udu, somewhere near Alaja. The former governor uh, of the state, in fact, tells a story of how he stopped that when he called the state chairman and said to him, my friend, if you do that, not only will your party secretariat be on fire, because I've been chief executive and chief secretary officer of this state for eight years, mm. you yourself, Jules, you will be on fire. And he said his wife, he could literally hear Jules shaking on the other end of the phone, and his wife was saying to him, I, I want you, I want you, you know? So somehow, they went back to the venue in Asaba where he, he had helped them establish possibilities for having the Congress. So I sent this letter, 20 hours to the thing, asking for all of this. I get a reply that's completely off point. I say, so, oh, well, these things come from Abuja. Then 12 o'clock on the day of Congress that's supposed to have started sometime earlier, I get a call from him. Members of the panel are here. Please come. Okay. I was prepared. So I arrived. General Lawrence Onoja was making a pitch for good conduct and all the usual things. I said, this is wonderful. This is democracy. I love democracy. At you that know. point, still no guidelines. No, no guidelines. No decision. So I then asked, please, we've not been able to obtain these guidelines. We've not been able to obtain a list. Can you kindly now provide this? So oh, we're giving this at 7.30 yesterday night in Abuja. Uh, but uh, we are there, he goes, looks like, looks like, say, but we're family. Yeah, we're family, let's go to the field, you know, let's just, it was so silly. It was so silly, it was wow. hard to describe. Mm -hmm. I thought, am I from this country? Yeah. Is this what all the years of my struggle? Look, Ruben, I started at age 17 to fight for freedom in this country. I missed my 18th birthday because I was on the streets. It was at 8 p.m. on the 6th of February, 1974, when we were demonstrating against the Adekweju killing at the University of Ibado. And somebody was making a speech and says, today, the 6th of February, 1974, will be remembered. And I say, oh my God, I'm 18. 
Today is my birthday. After a lifetime of this kind of struggle, this is what my country presents me as a tragedy. Well, what is the way for? What have you decided to do? I've written a formal petition. I have a petition here to say this is a sham, it's a farce, it makes a mockery of democracy. Can I have a copy? <laughs> yes, you can have a copy. This is my petition. <laughs> this is the letter that I wrote to the chairman of a party hmm. a week before. This is the one that I, okay. I gave to, the, the, the petition to Lawrence of Norja. By, by your lawyers. Your yes, petition is my lawyers. But my, my, the, the other letters written by me directly, the one I handed to Larry on Norja, General Noja, who was chair of a panel, which I called for a postponement of what was clearly shambolic. Yeah. And any person in good judgment would, but we're corralled. You know, you know what it reminded me of? There was a lady who ran for office in Kaduna. She says, you know the marvelous thing about Nigeria? The people will walk with the devil to take your votes away. And then they'll say to you, you know, it's God that gives power. So just, you know, I mean, we have become laughing stock for the world. Now, what I read in the papers is that at the moment, two factions yeah, two of factions, the uh, yes. APC in Delta State, you emerged as a candidate of one faction. Great Oguru emerged as a candidate of the other faction. Are you planning to go to court? I don't believe in all this faction business. Uh, but will you go to court if you uh, do not? I will exhaust the process. Definitely exhaust the process. This is not about me anymore. It's about the next generation. I mean, what am I looking for? I was not looking for anything. I was dragged and dragged reluctantly into this process. You remember the last time I was here, but I think it's important for the children. If we have to return to the streets, let's return to the streets. Let the barricades resume, because our country is at the edge of a precipice. Where there's a domination mentality, the will of some people. Let's have totalitarian government, because we're moving towards totalitarianism. What's the point in dressing it up and pretending? And that it's democracy. Yeah. Well, Prof, let's open it up a bit. It's not only in Delta State that we have this problem. There seems to be a disconnect between the uh, state, uh, the APC at the uh, state level and the APC at the uh, national level. Uh, if you look at what happened in Imo, Anambra, Rivers, Ogun State, Imo, Lagos, Oyo, I mean, we can go around the country. Uh, in many instances, the state will organize the state chapter will organize its own version of the primaries. The uh, National Working Committee will take a different decision. At the end of the day, Abuja will dictate. Now, so what has happened to you is unusual. So is it really something about what the party wants at the federal level or what the party wants at the state level? It would be presumptive of me to say that some people want this, some people want that. All I know is that this is a grand conspiracy. Okay. It is treasonable felony, what happened in Asaba and people need to be prosecuted for it. Um, you know, unfortunately for me, I'm a student of history. I'm a student of how nations make progress. And I can see clearly being unfolded before us a reason why progress will be impossible. And I want to stop my children from living in a country. If it means dying on the streets, wow. if it means dying on the streets, because the future of a civilization of love is built on the blood of matters. If it means dying on the streets, let's die on the streets so that our children will live. This is not acceptable. We cannot carry on like this. If we have to go to the International Criminal Court to bring this to a logical head, let's go. Because this is the beginning of how genocide starts. I could almost feel the moments before they started saying, cut down the tall trees in Rwanda. In some of the speeches I hear being made, I can almost see Adolf Hitler. And I'm wondering why it is not necessary. This obsession with domination of others. Yeah. This is the feast of St. Francis of Assisi today. The man who wanted peace, who said that he wanted to understand rather than be understood the one who said he wanted to console rather than console. Uh, uh, that I'm be consoled. And I stand and I say to myself, to myself, there must be something that we can do for our children. Okay, what is the process of going through the International Criminal Court? Because it seems like everything that is happening here, I don't think there will be any difference but, with the, given the history. Well, we, we must follow the process through. I formally appealed to the uh, appeals process of a party, you will exhaust that. If that doesn't work, look, 
he took Cardinal Singh and a few small women with their candle lights and their rosary beads to stop Marcos. Set the Philippines on fire. <laughs> Surely the people of Nigeria must know now that their future is at stake. Well, Prof, you, you, you said something about domination of others mm. uh, in terms of what happened in Delta State. Uh, does this have something to do about the relationship between the majorities and minorities not, in Delta State not at and all. the right of the Anomas to mm. also uh, mm. have a shot at the government? Well, that is something there, but what is more important is the individuals who want to dominate others. The individuals who, for whom abuse is just a way of life, for whom the dignity of others Oh, it does not matter. Oh, the Anomas can, this is small talk. Let's just put ourselves on the table. Let those individuals put themselves there to compete. Those people we're talking about, their own people are significantly against them because their people fear their authoritarian nature, their abuse of the rights of others. So it's not ethnic at all. Then the persons come out and compete on competence, on character. Let them come out and compete on compassion for the people. Let them put those things before the people and let the people judge. But they're so afraid of the people, they want to prevent the people from being involved in the process. That's what is at stake. It's between you know, a, a noble order and hell. This is where things stand in our country right now. And not to take up the gauntlet, not to go for it, to betray the essence of being. Well, uh, I mean, Prof, uh, you said General Onoja, when he arrived, talked about this being a family. Uh, you know, in Nigeria, that <laughs> phrase is a popular one, yeah. family affair. Yeah. Uh, when it is not phrased as family affair, it's called party supremacy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure uh, Ambode in Lagos State is just as aggrieved as you are. But at the end of the day, yesterday, uh, he conceded and he even promised to, to work with the uh, with the man that emerged. Now, if the uh, APC at the national level were to come to you and appeal to you and say, this is it's a family, family matter, family. <laughs> will you work for <laughs> whoever is chosen as the APC definitely candidate? Definitely not. Wow. Because okay. this is not truth. I'm a child of truth. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. And when the truth is lost, let God judge. You know, uh, Pope John Paul II, when he tried very hard to stop uh, George W. George Bush, W. Bush, from invading Iraq. And he tried and he tried and he tried, and the last moment he said, I leave you to the judgment of your conscience, the judgment of history, the judgment of God. That's where I will leave them. Prof, I've never seen you this angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you guys are but, long time friends. But what is happening now yeah. happened to the PDP in 2015. 2014, 2015, when there were complaints across the country uh, that candidates were being imposed, that uh, persons were being deliberately dominated and excluded and marginalized. And all of that you know, became one of the factors that affected the PDP in the 2015 general elections. Do you see the APC being affected by this crisis? I don't know. It's the people who will judge. We must go to the people. You see, Ruben, it's nothing about me. I didn't want even to be in this process. I, what do I care about being a governor? I just want the human condition uplifted. And I'm convinced that I can do it. In fact, one of my biggest points as an academic is Robin Sharma's work, uh, the leader who had no title. I prefer to function without title. So it's not about me. I don't care for a position. But I saw clearly, I thought the reason I was dragged into this, perhaps, by fate, was for me to see where my country was going. And when I saw it, I said, oh my God, this is the hottest part of hell, and we must stop it from getting there. It is that that is my motivation. It's not about me. I'm, reading, I'm willing to sign right now that I will not seek, I will not accept public office for the rest of my life. I don't need it. But we cannot allow a country to evolve like this. We will be playing into Robert Kaplan's prediction in the coming anarchy or how this part of the world would descend into anarchy. I saw this coming, and I started a group as far back as 2000. It was titled, yes. Professionals. Well, behind the concerned profession, that was one started, that was Nigerians United to Resist Anarchy, Neutral. Okay. After Kaplan's book came out. And you could see 
Kaplan predicted uh, in the Balkan ghosts what happened in Yugoslavia after Tito. He has predicted now that our part of the world will collapse into anarchy on the kinds of cleavages that we are seeing evolve. My challenge was how do we prevent this scenario? Leadership must be developed that has a broad perspective, that wants to build a civilization of love, care and compassion for the people, and making people realize that they have this shared humanity. And so I started this group just to help develop leaders. That's why I founded the Center for Values in Leadership, to get a new generation to understand that power means absolutely nothing. It's how you can use it to make impact. That what matters in life is the impact that you make, not the title that you have. And so having done all of those things, and I see clear vision of where our country is going, pure totalitarianism, I'm forced to say, must stop here. Well, Prof, since all of this happened, has anybody in the leadership of the APC tried to reach out to you? <laughs> Not as much as a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at this point, have you lost faith in the APC completely? No, 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 I have not. We, we, we created this as a response to wrong. Surely we must work it to become the vision we had of it. Any chance of that? Yes. Yes, clearly there is. With what is happening across the country? Well, this is why I struggle is part. I've written an op-ed piece just last night uh, uh, titled Back to the Streets, you know, the barricades, my life. And, and I talk in that about the redemptive possibilities of the human spirit. Mm. And we must believe in that. Otherwise, we're toast. But you need a collective. To Absolutely. Be able to do that. I mean, we're, can, we're can on the you phone. Find that collective within the APC. <clears throat> mm -hmm. We're on the phone around the country yesterday. The fellows who were on the streets with us, the Femi Falanos, and all of those, our country needs us again. Unfortunately, in the autumn of my time of being, I'm confronted with something that was the base of my prime. And the necessity to return to the air barricades. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Tommy, for uh, giving us the benefit of your experience this mm -hmm. time around uh, under the platform of the uh, All Progressives okay. Congress. Thank you. Now for a short break, when we come back, politician and member of the Pro National Conference Organization, Shagun Basharun, will be joining us in the studios. We'll be right back. <laughs>